who's not very smart. Even though the first woman looks as if she's about to touch a hot iron, the device is actually unplugged, so she won't hurt herself. The second lady, though, is about to touch a heated waffle maker. Oh no! John's parachute hasn't opened, and he's now plunging toward the ground. Does he have higher chances of survival if he falls into a lake or on a haystack? He should try to fall on a haystack. Do you see crocodiles hiding near the shore of the lake? Uh -oh. What do you think is more dangerous in this situation? A bear or a swarm of bees? Look, the bear is about to run after its prey. It won't pay any attention to you. But bees seem to be angry. They'll most likely go after you. Look at these people. Who's most likely to survive? The man hanging over the fire? A woman tied over a barrel filled with toxic liquid? Or this guy swinging over a field of sharp needles? The woman hanging over the barrel with toxic liquid is the one who will survive. Look, there's a hole in the barrel, and the liquid is leaking out of it. The woman just needs to wait until the barrel is empty and untie herself. To get out of the locked room, Jeremy had to crack this puzzle. 1 equals 5, 2 equals 15, 3 equals 215, 4 equals 3215, 4 equals 3215, 5 equals… What number is hidden under the question mark? It's 1. 5 equals 1, because 1 equals 5. But the door of the room still didn't open. Apparently, Jeremy had to solve another riddle. He had to arrange four nines in such a way that they were equal to 100. He could use any math symbols. How can the guy do it? Jeremy figured out the correct answer pretty fast. 99 plus 9 divided by 9 equals 100. You're crossing a railroad bridge when you spot a train coming toward you. The bridge is built over a lake swarming with crocodiles, so jumping into the water is out of the question. How can you survive in this situation? You're farther away from the shore you came from and won't have enough time to get back to that side. So your only option is to run toward the train really fast and turn left or right when you cross the bridge. Jack is taking part in a challenge. He's reached the final stage, which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win $1 million. There are four pots in front of him. In each of them, there's a key. Jack needs to get any key from any pot. But on top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl covering the fourth pot. Uh -oh. Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put the fire out with sand. He's in the desert, after all, and get the key. David's company develops apps for smartphones. Right now, he's looking for a designer. He's got hundreds of resumes, but he's chosen just three of them. Angela's resume says, I'm 23 years old, I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm a fast learner and have already designed similar applications. Helen wrote in her resume, I'm 26 and have four years of work experience. You should hire me because I've created lots of TikTok stories that have gone viral. And Eric's resume claims he's 28 years old 
With seven years of work experience, he's designed tons of apps and he's been working for Google since the company was launched. David can only hire one person, but it's okay because one applicant hasn't lied in their resume. Who is it? Eric has just seven years of work experience, but Google was officially launched in 1998. There are no stories on TikTok, meaning Helen couldn't create them. David hired Angela, even though she hasn't been working for a long time. She's honest and has a nice portfolio. Three friends agreed to hang out together on Friday night. One of them, Brian, was tasked with bringing pizza. But the guy was running extremely late. His friends were starving. Strangely, Brian wasn't picking up their calls. But in an hour or so, he sent them a selfie. In the photo, he was standing next to his car. In the following message, he wrote he had run out of gas. He was at a gas station, tanking his car up. But his friends didn't believe Brian's excuses. Why? In the picture, it's clearly seen that the guy has got an electric car. It doesn't need gas. Mark told his wife he was going on a business trip to Canada and asked her to pack his bag for him. It was winter, so his wife packed a pair of very warm socks, a scarf, and a knitted hat for Mark. When Mark came back, he said that his business trip was successful. Then he asked his wife why she hadn't put his toothbrush and toothpaste in his suitcase. The woman immediately understood that her husband was lying about going on a business trip. How did she figure it out? She put his toothbrush and toothpaste under the scarf, hat, and warm socks. If he didn't take them out of his bag, it probably wasn't very cold outside, which means that, most likely, he was not in Canada. One out of nine identical balls is heavier than the others. How can you figure out which one it is after just two weighings? You need to divide all the balls into three groups and weigh two of them. That's how you can figure out which group contains the heavy ball. After that, you should pick two balls from the heaviest group. Weigh one against the other, and you'll understand which ball of the three is the heaviest. There was a blackout in the city, but the bus driver still noticed a dog on the road and managed to stop in time and avoid hitting the animal. How did he do this? This accident happened during the day. You have six glasses standing in a row on the table. The first three of them are filled with water and the other three are empty. You need to move just one glass to arrange them in such a way that full and empty glasses alternate. How can you do it? Just pick up glass number two and pour the water into glass number five. You enter a room and see that there's nothing inside but a blackboard on the wall. There are four words written on it. Pin, check, boiling, view. You have to figure out a five-letter word that can be added to each of them to make an existing word or word combination. Have you realized that the necessary word is point? Then you'll get pinpoint, checkpoint, boiling point, and viewpoint. Now, you're in a strange building that looks like a planetarium. There are photos of distant stars on the walls. In the middle, there's a screen with a riddle on it. N-E-U-S-R-N-E-R-R-S-T-H. U-S. Question mark. You have to figure out what is hiding under the question mark. If you've realized that the correct answer is RY, congratulations! The list is made up of the last two letters of the names of the planets of the solar system. In the order from Neptune to Mercury, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, 
Earth, Venus, Mercury. Two daughters and two mothers went out to a cafe. Each of them ate a slice of pizza. But strangely, only three slices were eaten. How come? These ladies are a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter. Two of them are moms, and two are daughters. A woman went out of the airport. She hailed a taxi and gave the directions to the driver. As soon as they drove off, the woman started to talk. Her blabbering annoyed the driver. He turned to her and said, I can't hear what you're saying. I'm almost deaf. The woman was shocked and didn't open her mouth for the rest of the ride. Only after she got out of the taxi did she realize the man had lied to her. How did the woman understand it? If the driver had hearing problems, he wouldn't have been able to follow her directions. Detective James was invited to Long Hill College, where more and more students had their things stolen. The detective was asked to investigate these cases. In a week's time, the man had three suspects. What were you doing when the last theft happened? He asked them. Thomas said, that day I was away. I had to take my younger sister to her rehearsals. Amanda replied, I spent that day in the library getting ready for my presentation. And Ryan said, this summer I'm going to Denmark with my parents. That's why I spend all my free time learning Dutch. Detective James immediately understood who was lying. Can you figure it out? It was Ryan. They speak Danish in Denmark. Dutch is the language of the Netherlands. Jason works in the same company as Amy, a bright and lovely girl. The guy has had a crush on Amy since they first met. To attract the girl's attention, Jason agrees to take part in the brain challenge game organized by their company. The first task is to crack a rebus puzzle. Jason is given a piece of paper. That's what he sees there. It doesn't take the guy long to figure out the answer. What is it? It's broken promises. Jason is one of the few who gave the correct answer. He moves to the next level. He finds himself in a room full of random stuff. There, he needs to find an object that would be the answer to the following question. What goes up when the rain goes down? Look around and help Jason find the needed object. The guy chose a red and white umbrella. And that was the right answer. His next challenge was to get out of a basement. There are no windows there. Jason sees just one door with a letter combination lock. The only thing that can probably give him some hint is a note he finds in the farthest corner. P plus 3, N minus 1, B minus 1, N plus 4, S plus 1. What's the code word? Jason needed more time to crack this riddle, but he managed to get out of the basement. The code word was SMART. The key to this riddle was hidden in the alphabet. P plus three following letters is S, N minus one letter is M, and so on. Jason is amazed to find out he's one of the two contestants to make it to the finals. Now, he has to do his best to win. The guy comes up to the table with three cups on it, but only one of these drinks is safe to try. The other two are poisoned. And even though a mistake won't cost Jason his life, the consequences will be unpleasant. The drinks are tea with sugar, cappuccino, and hot chocolate. Which one should Jason choose? If it was indeed sugar in the tea, it would have melted completely. But it didn't happen. Cappuccino looks suspiciously green. It's probably unsafe to drink. Jason opted for the hot chocolate and won the challenge. Now, Amy will definitely notice him. Three people are hiding in bathroom stalls. Try to figure out who is a pregnant woman. It's the one wearing the untied sneakers. 
it's often difficult for pregnant women to bend over to lace up their footwear. Two people were born at the same moment, but they don't celebrate their birthdays on the same day. How is it possible? They were born in different time zones. In one of these zones, it was already the next day. Detective Brown was having dinner in his kitchen. Suddenly, he heard screams coming from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was open. When he ran inside, he saw a paramedic bending over a lying man. Once the doctor saw the detective, he exclaimed, He fell down the stairs. Luckily, he's just unconscious. I need to take him to the hospital. Detective Brown didn't need to think twice. He called the ambulance and arrested the man on the spot. Why? When the detective was running towards the neighbor's house, he didn't see any car outside. Then how did the paramedic get there? And how did he know his help was needed? You don't have them when you're born, but you get them later. In several years, you don't have them anymore. But then they come again, but in a different form. Many years later, they might leave you again. What are they? They are your teeth. A criminal appeared in a small town, and two young women went missing. Right now, the third girl is being taken away. When she comes to her senses, she finds herself in a well with two other girls. The well isn't particularly deep, so they decide to try to get out of it. The shortest and slimmest of them climbs on top of the other two, but she can't reach the edge of the well. What can the girls do to get out of there? The tallest of the girls should climb on top. She has the longer arms and will easily reach the edge of the well. You get lost in the woods in the middle of the winter. Suddenly, you see a cabin. It's dark and cold inside. There is just one candle on the table and a wood-burning stove in the corner. You pull out your matchbox and see there's only one match left. What should you light first? The match, of course. It was winter when an elderly couple finished building a pretty new house. The husband was responsible for the construction, while his wife was a self-appointed decorator. The house looked beautiful. Very proud, they invited their teenage grandchildren to have a look at their work. But within an hour, one guy and two girls managed to break several windows. They also knocked down the fence, removed the decorations, and ruined the roof. But the most bizarre thing, the retired couple didn't seem to mind. They just smiled looking at the teenagers. Can you figure out what was going on? The grandparents made a gingerbread house and invited their grandchildren to eat it. Five costs $25 and 25, $50. If you buy 255, you'll pay $75. What is it that you buy and how much does one item cost? You're buying door numbers, and one of them costs $25. On a rainy Monday morning, a car hit a woman at the crosswalk and sped away without stopping. Luckily, the woman wasn't badly hurt. She even managed to describe the vehicle before being taken to a hospital. It was a green van. The accident happened in a small town. That's why the police figured out easily that there were just three cars like that. They found and questioned all the car owners. Gary said, My sister took part in a concert in another town. I gave her a lift and waited for the show to finish to drive her back. Angela explained to the police she'd been busy with some household chores, gardening, washing her van, and the like. Larry answered he was ill. That's why he spent the whole day in bed drinking hot tea. The police officers understood who was lying right away. Who was it? It was a rainy day. Washing a car and gardening when it's raining? Not the best idea. Angela must be lying. 
A man was in an eight-story building when a fire started. He jumped out the window but didn't even bruise himself. How is it possible? The man jumped out of the first floor window. Two people are standing near the river. Both of them want to get to the opposite side, but the boat can carry only one of them. It's summer and the river isn't frozen. And still they manage to get to the other bank. How? They are on opposite sides of the river. One town had a weird law. All the men leaving there had to be clean shaven, but no man was allowed to shave himself. The only person in the town who was licensed to shave them was a 40-year-old barber. But then, who shaved the barber? There was no need. The barber was a woman. A mother promised her son to pay him $60 per hour if he washed his hands for six seconds before eating a meal. The son did that, and his mom gave him his well-earned money. But the boy got upset. Why? Because he received just 10 cents. Uh-oh, Brandon has missed too many lectures, and now the guy has problems with his professor. The man agrees to give the student a chance to redeem himself, but only if he fulfills a task the professor has for him. I'll give you one glass of milk and one glass of water. You'll need to pour the two liquids into a bowl, but you should be able to separate the milk from the water later. You can't use any kind of dividers. Brandon spent several hours mulling over the problem, but he was desperate enough to crack this riddle. What did he do? He poured all the water into a bowl and froze it. After that, he added the milk. One morning, Melissa saw that some money was missing from the wallet she had left on the table the night before. Her husband was on a business trip, so it must have been one of her sons who took the cash. Jason, who was 17, 15-year-old Jacob, or her youngest son, Andrew, he was 13. Melissa asked her sons what they had been doing the previous evening. Jason said, I felt unwell and had a headache. After dinner, I took a painkiller and went to bed right away. Jacob told his mom, My friend Eric stayed for dinner. After that, I gave him a lift home. And Andrew reminded Melissa he had had his basketball training. The woman immediately understood who had taken the money. Can you figure it out as well? Jacob was lying. He was only 15 years old and couldn't drive, legally. Detective Green was called to investigate an accident. A car crashed into a store window and smashed the glass. There are two suspects. Both of them deny causing the accident. Detective Green doesn't need much time to figure out who the culprit is. Do you know it too? It's the owner of the blue car. The pattern on its tires is the same as the one on the ground in front of the store. It was a busy Monday morning at the police station when a man rushed in. I was robbed on the way to the bank, he screamed. I was going there carrying a bag with a large sum of money. Suddenly a man wearing a black mask and a pair of gloves ran up to me. He snatched the bag and darted away. The police officer listened to the man and asked him about a fresh cut on his right cheek. The man replied it was left by a ring the criminal had been wearing. When the policeman heard these words, he immediately understood the man was lying. How did he realize that? The man said the robber had been wearing gloves. Then how could the ring scratch his cheek? You lose your friends in a crowd. You spend half an hour looking for them. And finally, here they are. 
What is the first thing you do as soon as you see them? You stop searching. Look at these two women and the teenager sitting on the floor. He seems to be absorbed in his smartphone. Can you figure out which woman is his mother? It's the woman on the left. Children often subconsciously sit facing their parents. The teenager and the woman also have the same hair color. Timothy and Laura were high school sweethearts. They got married shortly after college. So far, they've been together for 20 years and have two kids who don't live with them anymore. Unfortunately, the spouses have started to fight a lot recently. One day, they talk and decide to divorce. Both of them confess they've already found new partners on a dating site. Timothy says he's happy to have lots of common interests with his internet girlfriend. And Laura boasts that her new boyfriend understands her perfectly. One day, Timothy and Laura decide to meet their ideal partners in real life. Strangely, after this meeting, the couple calls off their divorce. Can you figure out why? Timothy and Laura found out they were having an online relationship with each other. An old man decided to leave all the money he's been saving for his entire life to one of his three sons. But he couldn't choose which one should get the money. That's why the man gave each of them one coin. He asked his sons to buy something that would fill the largest room in their house. The oldest son bought some raw cotton, but it wasn't enough to fill the whole room. The middle son brought home some straw, and still there was some space left in the room. And the youngest son bought two cheap things that managed to fill the room right away. He ended up being the one to get his father's money. What did he bring home? The youngest son bought a box of matches and a candle. After he lit the candle, the room was instantly filled with light. Patrick shaves every day. But every morning, he finds his beard to be just as long as it was the day before. How come? Patrick is a barber. He shaves other people. Amanda was 21 on her last birthday. But she's going to be 23 on her next one. How is it possible? It's Amanda's 22nd birthday today. Helen was walking in the forest and got lost. After wandering hours to find her way back, she comes to a clearing. There, the woman sees three narrow paths. But one of them is blocked by huge, dense bushes with sharp thorns. The second is littered with trash and broken glass. And the third path is guarded by massive, scary-looking mantises. Uh Which road should Helen pick? The woman should choose the third path. Mantises might look terrifying, but they're totally harmless. A mad scientist caught Kevin and locked him in a small room. There were no windows, and the door was locked. But there was a note on the table. It was from the scientist. J-F-M-A-M-J-A-S-O-N-D. Guess the missing letter and I'll set you free. In 10 minutes, Kevin was already running away from the strange place. He managed to figure out that the missing letter was J. Those were the first letters of the months of the year, from January to December. And the sixth letter, J, stood for June. Can you figure out what this rebus puzzle means?
It's no biggie. No big E? Yeah. It's a fruit, it's tasty and sweet, and can give you a lot of energy. But you can also find it in your calendar. What is it? It's a date. Anna asked her colleague Daniel to give her a lift to the college where her daughter studied. She promised the girl to take her shopping that day. On their way there, Anna got an idea. How about a bet? I'll prepare one of your reports for you if you manage to figure out which girl is my daughter. Daniel was up for the challenge. When they arrived at the college, they saw three girls waiting at the gates. Daniel was confused. They all look similar. Can you figure out who Anna's daughter is? It's the girl on the left. Anna has the letter L tattooed on her wrist, and the girl is wearing a bracelet with the same letter. A teenager is walking along the street together with a car mechanic. The guy is the mechanic's son. But the mechanic isn't the boy's father. How is it possible? The car mechanic is the guy's mother. Two cars, silver and white, are moving along the same highway. The silver car is traveling at a speed that's twice higher than that of the white car. They both started at the same time. And still, after some time on the road, the two cars come across each other. How is it possible? The cars were moving toward each other. John and Michael are car mechanics. After finishing a tricky repair, they get out from under the car. John's face is all dirty, but Michael's face is miraculously clean. And still, it's Michael who goes and washes his face. Why? Michael looked at his colleague and thought his face was dirty too. Uh But when John saw Michael, whose face was spotless, he concluded he was just as clean. When do you keep moving when you see red, but stop once it's green? It always happens when you're eating a watermelon. Who is the only brother-in-law of your mother's brother? That's your father. One night, a group of thieves was stealing boxes with electronics from a warehouse. They were carrying them to their van when they heard a police car siren. But even though the thieves didn't manage to avoid the police, they didn't get arrested. Why? They started to carry the boxes back to the warehouse, and the police thought it was a late-night delivery. Ooh, that's kind of smart. A notorious bank robber came to the city and huge sums of money started to disappear from the vaults of the city's banks. No one could stop the criminal. They were never caught on CCTV cameras. Bank security officers never saw anything suspicious. There was only one strange thing about the thief. They always left behind a slip of paper with a tooth, spider, and a lizard drawn on it. Was it some code? But several months later, the police managed to arrest three suspects. They were Mr. Pantafent, Ms. Toosbard, and Mr. Superhero. Yep, some people do have bizarre last names. Who is the infamous bank robber? It was Ms. Toosbard. The pictures she kept leaving behind were her hint. Tooth, spider, lizard. Brandon's wife, Brenda, went to visit her friend who lived in another town. They agreed she would call her husband when she arrived there. But instead of calling, she sent him a message. Hey, everything is fine. 
I'll just go downstairs to buy coffee. I'll be brief now. More details in the next message. Love ya. Once Brandon read this message, he jumped into his sports car and rushed to the town where his wife had gone. Why? Brenda isn't simply terrible at spelling. The typing errors make up the word save. Someone stole extremely important documents from Mr. Larson's office. One week later, the police arrested the criminal. It was a woman called Emily. She was being questioned for three days straight, but still refused to tell the police where the folder with the documents was. Then, several officers visited her apartment. At first sight, nothing was out of the ordinary. But after careful inspection, they figured out where the documents were. Can you do the same? One floor tile seemed to be loose. Once the officers lifted it, they found the papers. When Victoria went to college, she started to live in a dormitory, sharing a room with another girl, Maria. Victoria's neighbor was very popular with guys. She had three admirers, Walter, Nathan, and Jeremy. But one day, Maria disappeared. Victoria was sure one of the guys was behind this. Maria loved drawing, and there were several pictures on her table. Victoria looked at them attentively and realized who she should ask about her friend. Jeremy must know something. Look at the pictures. A jacket, yo-yo, mouse, earth, rocket, and elephant. The first letters of these objects make up his name. Look at this poor guy. He seems to be stuck in the middle of a natural disaster. Which one should he choose to survive? A tornado, flood, or lightning strike? The only place where the guy might find some kind of shelter is a high hill behind his back. High ground during a lightning storm or a tornado is a terrible idea which means the man will only be able to survive a flood. Carl was a rich man who had two adult sons, Ethan and Christian. They all lived in one house. One day, Carl saw that his most expensive ancient Chinese vase was missing. The only people who were at home the night before were his sons. The man didn't want to involve the police. That's why he decided to talk to each of his sons himself. He saw Ethan driving through the gates. He was back from his daily visit to the bakery. The guy said that the night before, he'd been practicing the guitar in his room. He didn't notice anything suspicious. Christian was near the swimming pool. He told his father, Now I understand. Yesterday I saw Ethan. He was putting some box in the back seat of his car. It must have been the vase. But Carl immediately realized it was Christian who had taken the vase. How did he figure it out? Ethan drives a sports car. It only has two seats. He couldn't have put the box in the back seat. It means Christian is lying. Jack and Deborah lived in a pretty small house near a forest. One day, the man went for a walk and never came back. Deborah called the police and they went to search for her husband. Soon they spotted him. He was lying on the ground, trapped under a large tree that had fallen on top of him. Suddenly, uh -oh. a stranger appeared from behind the trees. He exclaimed, How terrible! But it's not a surprise, really. The wind was so strong this morning, it must have knocked down this tree. The police officers immediately arrested the man. Why? The tree doesn't look broken by the wind. It looks as if someone cut it down. It was an unusually snowy winter. Detective Adam Davis was walking home from his office when he saw a young woman. She was carrying two large bags. For some reason, the girl seemed suspicious to the detective. He came up to her, showed her his badge, and asked what she had in her bags. Oh, I'm going on vacation. That's just some stuff I'll need there. And still, 
Adam called for backup and arrested her. Why? Look at the woman's footprints. She got out of the house through the window. A bizarre way to leave your own home. She must have broken into the house, and there are stolen things in her bags. A man was walking along a railroad track. Suddenly, he saw a train speeding toward him. But instead of getting away from the track immediately, the man started to run in the direction of the approaching train. When the train was very close, he finally jumped off the track. Why did he do this? When the man saw the train, he was on the bridge. He couldn't leave the track right away, and the nearer end of the bridge was closer to the oncoming train. Ryan worked as a cook's assistant in Mr. Miller's house. One day, the man's competitors promised Ryan to pay him a huge sum of money if he poisoned the rich businessman. Ryan waited until the cook took a day off. Then, he made dinner for the whole family. Mr. Miller, his wife, and their two children. Each family member ordered a different dish. Ryan only poisoned the one the businessman was going to eat. You can save Mr. Miller if you guess which dish is his. Keep in mind that Donna, the man's wife, is a vegan. The businessman himself loves meat. Kira, the daughter, is on a diet. And Amy can't eat sugar. So, which dish did Ryan make for Mr. Miller? It's spaghetti with meat sauce. Congrats, you saved Mr. Miller. Four girls were driving to a party. At some point, the one who was behind the wheel failed to control the car and crashed into a tree. Luckily, everyone in the car was wearing seatbelts, so no one was hurt. But when the police arrived, none of the girls wanted to admit she was the one who was driving. The officers examined the car and looked around. And in no time, they knew which girl was lying. Can you figure it out? Almost all the girls are wearing really high heels. It must be extremely uncomfortable and unsafe to drive wearing such shoes. And only the girl in the black dress has sneakers on. She was the driver. A math teacher told his students about Roman numerals. After that, he asked them to draw one line and turn nine into six. His only condition was that the students couldn't lift their pens from the paper until the line was finished. Mark was the first one to complete this task. How did he do it? He drew the letter S in front of IX and got six. Jeffrey was brought up by his grandfather, who was a billionaire. Unfortunately, the guy didn't seem to know the value of money. The elderly man worried about his grandson. He told Jeffrey he would stop giving him money until the guy got married. It meant that Jeffrey had to forget about his fun life. No more fast cars, parties, and clubs. Luckily, it didn't take the guy long to find a girlfriend. They met on a dating site. Amanda seemed to be everything Jeffrey had been dreaming about. Smart, pretty, funny, and rich. The guy was about to propose to her when something happened. One day, Amanda sent him a photo. In this photo, she was standing next to a luxurious car. The message she sent afterward read, How do you like my new toy? That's when Jeffrey realized Amanda had been lying to him all this time. How did he figure it out? The girl is wearing a badge in the photo. She must be working at a car dealership, not buying extravagant cars. There was a blackout in the city, but a bus driver still noticed a dog on the road. He managed to stop in time not to hit the animal. How come? This near miss happened during the day. 
They have no feathers, no scales, no body, and no bones. And yet, they have fingers and thumbs of their own. What are they? A pair of gloves. Yep, the police found out that several criminals were going to leave the country by plane. Unfortunately, no one knew what they looked like or how big the group was. Four suspicious men were detained, and their baggage was examined. Can you figure out who is innocent? Why would a bald man need a shampoo? A supposedly blind person with a flashlight. Toothpaste without a toothbrush. It seems only the man on the left isn't a criminal. Anne invited her friends to spend a week in her house. The young people were having tons of fun. The day before they had to leave, a terrible storm started. It was pouring with rain. Strong winds were breaking trees, tearing down power lines, and causing power outages all over the place. The next morning, the weather was better. But Anne discovered that her favorite ring, with a diamond her granny had left her many years ago, was missing. She asked all her friends to come to the living room. I can't find one thing that's very important to me. Can you tell me what you were doing yesterday? Megan answered she spent most of the whole day in her room, reading. Walter said, I was practicing my electric guitar in the garage. Marie told Anne she didn't even know what the ring looked like. Anne knew right away who the thief was. Can you figure it out too? There was a power outage. It means Walter couldn't be playing an electric guitar. And Anne said nothing about the important thing being a ring. So how did Marie know it? Walter and Marie stole the ring together. A jewelry store manager called the police. Help, he shouted. My store has been robbed. When the officers arrived at the place, they couldn't see the man. Suddenly, they heard someone banging on the door. They didn't notice this door at first because it was hidden in the corner. When they unlocked it, they saw a man. It was the manager. Someone locked me in here. It must be one of the shop assistants. The police officers asked the man to call his employees. They were going to question them. Just a second, I can't find my phone. Ah, here it is. The manager didn't even start to dial the number before the officers arrested him. Why? If he was locked in the room and the phone was lying on the counter, how could he call the police? Police detective Thomas Davis was walking along the street on a winter evening. Suddenly, he saw a person in a black mask sneaking out of a house through the window. They were carrying two large bags. The detective realized it was a burglar. He ran after the stranger, but they turned the corner and disappeared. Thomas understood the criminal had hidden in one of these houses. But which one? It can't be the house on the left. There are too many people inside. There are no footprints in the snow leading to the house on the right. It means no one has been there for quite some time. Which leaves us with the house in the middle. Nathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet. But his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware the guy would return at midnight. They decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. No chores for them for one week. Not to fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make pizza. And Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. 
A family with two teenage children went on vacation to the seaside. They lived in a small bungalow almost right on the beach. Everything was great at first, but two days after their arrival, the younger son went missing. The police had four suspects. They invited the guy's family to look at them. Maybe they could recognize someone. The teenager's mother didn't need more than a glance before she knew who was behind her son's disappearance. Who was it? It's the man wearing the missing guy's baseball cap. Carl, an heir to a giant fortune, was found unconscious during a wild party. His sister, Sarah, stumbled across him in the bathroom. The guy was lying on the floor, barely alive. Sarah immediately called the ambulance and police. Carl was taken to a hospital. Doctors saved his life, but the guy was still unconscious. He couldn't talk. When the police questioned Sarah, she told them that her brother had felt unwell. He went to the bathroom to freshen up. After some time, she heard some noise and went to check on him. Carl must have slipped and hit his head on the sink. After the police officers heard this story, the sister got arrested right away. Why? For one thing, it happened during a loud party. How could the girl hear any suspicious noise? Carl was also lying too far away from the sink, which was on the other side of the bathroom. Boy, with a sister like that. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there were no flashlights in the Stone Age. All the people working in the office, Janice, Brian, Teresa, Sean, and Roy, used the fridge in the kitchen to store their lunch. On Friday, Janice opened the fridge to get her bacon and cheese sandwich she brought from home. But it wasn't there. Someone had eaten her lunch. Who was it? Well, it couldn't be Brian. There's a wet umbrella near his desk. He has just come in. Teresa is a vegan. She eats neither cheese nor bacon. Roy is on a diet, and such a sandwich is by no means light food. This means Sean was the one who stole Janice's sandwich. You bad boy. When Joe came to work, he saw his safe was open. All the money and important documents were gone. He immediately called his friend, Detective Callum. When the man arrived, Joe told him, I think it was one of my employees. They must have borrowed my key and opened the safe. Callum questioned the three people who worked for Joe. Wayne said, I don't even know what the safe looks like. And of course, I don't know which key opens it. Austin said, I'm Joe's assistant. I do have the second key to the safe, but I was on holiday and just returned. And Julia just said, I can't prove it, but I didn't do it. Who's lying? Wayne. No one told him the safe could be opened with a key, not a combination lock. Then how did he know? Someone stole several expensive t-shirts in a designer clothing store. The manager told the security guard he had half an hour to find the thief. If you don't make it in time, you'll be fired! The guard rushed to watch the CCTV footage. Luckily, he managed to figure out who the thief was before his time ran out. And do you know who it was? It's the man in the dark blue sweater. His belly miraculously became larger after he spent some time in the store. He must be hiding the t-shirts under his sweater. Look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong here. The reflection in the mirror is all wrong. Terry was sailing around the world when his yacht got caught in a terrible storm. 
At one moment, the guy hit his head against the mast and lost consciousness. When he came around, he was on a beach. Unfriendly-looking locals had gathered around. Soon, Terry figured out they really didn't like strangers. They offered the guy three options. To send him to a cave filled with tarantulas, throw him into a pit swarming with yellow scorpions, or make him meet hungry lions. What should Terry choose to survive? He should opt for tarantulas. These creatures look terrifying, but they are mostly harmless to humans. Mostly. Captain Jack was a feared pirate who had robbed thousands of ships. He did it with the help of just one small trick. It allowed him to approach any ship from any country close enough to board it. What was this trick? Captain Jack had a collection of flags from different countries. Instead of using Jolly Roger, the fearsome black flag, he raised the flag of the country the ship was from. It got him immediate access. In what situation do you have more chances to survive? If you're falling from a 10-story building, or if you come across several scary snakes that look unfriendly? The snakes might not be venomous, then they won't cause you any harm. But if you're falling from a big height, well, only a miracle can… Nah, nothing's gonna save you. Bye bye Phantoms! And other fantastic creatures! <laughs> ah, you're not impressed. All your life you've been running a myth-busting blog. It's gotten pretty popular recently. Abandoned hospitals, creepy hotel rooms, haunted apartments, cursed houses… You spend a night in all of them, and take a bunch of videos to prove that all those scary stories are nothing more than fairy tales. One day, one of your fans sends you a tip about a sinister dark castle located on a rocky cliff near the coast of a raging ocean. She says this place is the scariest in the world, but you're not intimidated easily. You grab your phone and head on over. Get ready to test your courage and resourcefulness. Count how many answers you get right, and find out what your score means at the end of the video. Since it's your first night, you decide to spend it in a small village. It's right by the scary castle. Usually, people can't wait to tell you how freaky this or that place is. But in this village, everyone keeps silent. You ask one of the residents to tell you something about the castle, but she responds with nothing. Did she not want to speak to you? No, that's not it. She's afraid of answering. How do you know that? I'll give you six seconds to figure it out. Look at her hand. It says, run away, on her forearm. To reach the castle, you first need to walk through a small forest. At the edge of it, you see three roads and three signs. The first sign shows a wolf, the second, a bear, and the third, a vampire. Which road should you choose? Uh -oh. You have five seconds. Quick, make a decision. You don't believe in vampires, remember? But bears and wolves, eh, those are real. Besides, it's morning, and if vampires were real, they'd be steering clear of the sunlight. You make your way through the dense thickets of the forest and record what's happening on your phone. You notice a hut. Yeah, I bet a vampire lives here, you laugh to yourself. Ha <laughs> ha! Still, you decide to check it out. Your readers love that kind of stuff. You go into the dark hut and turn on the light on your phone. Cobwebs cover everything. The curtains are drawn. Some candles are out on the table. Ooh, a key. You grab it and put it inside your pocket. Before leaving, you notice a large wooden box in the corner and hear snoring coming from inside. You're scared out of your mind right now. And just then, the snoring stops. A vampire climbs out of the box. Oh, this is bad. Maybe you can get away before it realizes what's going on. You try to get outside, but the door's locked. Oh, the key. Yes. No, it doesn't work. What should you do? Quick, you don't have much time. Ah, 
and just open the curtains. If it really is a vampire, it should be afraid of the sunlight. It worked! The vampire jumps back into the box to escape the light, and you make a break for it through the window. Finally, you reach the edge of the forest and get your first glimpse of the castle. In front of you is a large gate. You push on it. It swings open. As soon as you're in the courtyard, you realize you are not alone. Five other people are there. They're just standing around. No one's talking to each other. You want to know if they've heard anything about the owner of that creepy hut in the woods. So you walk a little closer. But you get a strange feeling deep in your stomach. Something's wrong with these people. You can't believe your eyes, but it looks like some of them are actual zombies. How many zombies are there? You have 10 seconds. Look closely. There are two of them. That guy over there doesn't have an ordinary arm. It's all bones, like a skeleton. And that woman in sunglasses, she's holding someone's eyes in her hand. Are those her eyes? You approach a guy who seems almost normal, but he doesn't look at you. He just keeps staring at the sky. Uh, it's a little scary. Okay, time to venture into the castle. As soon as you open the door, you hear music. It's a waltz, and it's coming from the main hall. Several couples are dancing around in 18th century costumes. Yikes. You decide to try and blend in by hitting the dance floor yourself. Well, after a few seconds, you look around and your face turns pale. These people are phantoms. How did you figure it out? Look carefully at the details. You have five seconds. Look down. None of the dancers are touching the floor. They're just floating along. You run out of the hall, climb the wide stairs, and run into a random room. You lock the door and breathe heavily. <sighs> oh, you're starting to have serious doubts about all this mystical stuff. Maybe it does exist. But how is that even possible? A ray of sunlight suddenly shines on a luxurious bed with beautiful linen. Then it hits you. You're tired. Oh, you'll just lie down on the edge of the bed and a 10-minute nap will really help get your head on straight. As soon as you close your eyes, though, you hear a rustling in the sheets right next to you. Then you feel a cold hand on your neck. You keep your eyes sealed shut. You're way too afraid to open them, but you pinch yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. The fingers on your neck start squeezing ever so slightly. Oh, that's it. You bolt out of bed. As fast as you can, you whip out your phone and try to record the uh, whatever it was. But there's nothing, only an empty bed. Were you sleeping or was it real? You noticed something. Phew, oh, it's just a bad dream after all. What did you notice? I'll give you six seconds. The sun was shining when you lay down. Now it's the full moon that's shining. You were out cold for a while. You leave the bedroom and walk down a long hallway lit by torches and candles. The silence is broken only by the churning of your stomach. Eh, guess you're hungry. Well, there's a heavy wooden door in front of you, and it's open just a crack. The pleasant smell of food starts wafting its way into the hallway. You go in and find a huge table, decked out with real silverware and porcelain. Oh, the food looks delicious. There's caviar, lobster, fruits, vegetables, different meats, plenty of desserts. Several people are sitting around the table, and as you approach them, they turn around to look at you. They're uh -oh. all vampires! How did you know? I'll give you five seconds to figure it out. The food on the table is untouched. The vampires have been waiting for their most important dish. You! You run. You make it back out into the hallway, then dart down a dark corridor. The vampires are chasing you. They're screaming! You find three doors at the end of the corridor. The first one has a fire symbol on it. The second has a snake symbol. And the third just says, exit. You try to open it, but it's locked. The vampires are closing in. What are you going to do? You have four seconds before you become vampire food. Try the key you found in the vampire's hut. Great, it fits. You run out into the courtyard and lock the door behind you. The moon is hidden behind some thick white clouds. You sneak through the courtyard and open the back gate of the castle. 
Next to the gate is a sign with an image of a werewolf on it. You walk off as quietly as possible. After about five minutes, you see a long bridge. There's a beautiful woman standing at the other end. She waves to you and motions for you to come closer. But something's bothering you. Could she be a werewolf? So, you can either cross the bridge or head back to the castle. What can you do to find out if she really is a werewolf? You have 10 seconds for this one. Good luck. Wait until the moon appears from behind the clouds. Your intuition was right. As soon as the moonlight falls on the woman, she begins to turn into a werewolf. Uh Eh, Still kind of cute, though. You run back into the castle grounds and close the gate behind you. Okay, reality check. You're in the courtyard. Vampires are inside the castle, a werewolf is waiting outside, and zombies are approaching. You're trapped. Why did you even come to such a scary castle? You pull out your phone and start recording a farewell video. You thank your followers for their views and comments. Thanks for subscribing. You admit that mystical creatures do exist and promise that you'll never set foot in a place like this ever again if you survive. The zombies are closing in and the werewolf is breaking down the gate. Oh, awesome. Your fear is gone and you realize that this whole thing is staged. It's all a show. How'd you figure it out? Watch the farewell video again and find the proof that everything is fake. I'll give you 10 seconds to spot the clues. Do you see that big guy with a camera behind you in the tower window? The zombies stop growling. They scream, surprise! They're not zombies. They're just wearing a whole ton of makeup. The gate opens and the woman takes off her werewolf costume and smiles. The vampires come out of the castle, carrying their fake fangs. This whole thing was set up by your fans. They wanted to scare you, and it worked. You're angry at them, but so happy that you're still alive. Okay, let's see how many you got right. One to three points. Eh, It'll be difficult for you to act in stressful situations. Watch more riddles and train yourself to be calm and focused. Four to six points. Something really bad has to happen for you to lose control. Phantoms don't seem to scare you at all that much. 7 to 10 points. You don't even know what fear is, but you do know how to come out victorious in any situation. You have one question for your fans. How did they create that floating effect for those dancers? That was awesome. Your fans look at each other. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? There were no dancers. A slight chill runs down your back. Are you up for a detective challenge? Then grab a pen and a piece of paper. Each correct answer will give you one point. You'll find the results at the end of the video. Aaron has just become a detective and already got his first real case. He has to work undercover at a luxurious resort. The police suspect that the hotel owners are involved in some shady deals. Aaron's first task is to sneak into the manager's office and check his documents. But the door is locked and there's a combination lock. Aaron has to figure out the password The young detective knows he needs to solve a math riddle, and the answer will be the code. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 equals. As soon as he punches in the code, the door opens. What is the correct number? It's 30. There are no mathematical symbols at the end of the first and second lines. It means the whole thing looks like this. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 equals 30. Aaron manages to get into the office and look through the papers, but he doesn't find anything useful there. While the detective was busy, one guest discovered her diamond ring and earrings were missing. Someone must have stolen the jewelry. Aaron has three suspects, Walter, another guest, Alice, a maid, and Alan, a porter. The undercover detective decides to check their rooms. He can't spend much time there, but what he sees is enough for him to understand who the thief is. Can you figure it out? It's 
it's Alice. There's already a packed suitcase in her room. She's about to run away with the stolen jewelry. Another day, another problem. This time, someone pushed elderly Mrs. Stevenson into the swimming pool when there was no one around. But this someone didn't know the lady was once the best swimmer of her university, and she never stopped practicing. And it wasn't difficult for her to cross the swimming pool and get out of it at the other side. Erin asked the lady if she had seen the attacker. She didn't. But she was sure it was someone who knew she'd just received a huge inheritance. The detective needed to talk to three people. There were Mrs. Stevenson's son, Terry, her granddaughter, Gloria, and her niece, Judy. Terry said, These days I've been very busy. Something urgent came up at work. I don't even have time to leave my room to go to breakfast or dinner. Gloria asked Aaron to keep her secret. She was seeing a waiter she'd met at a beach cafe. If her relatives found out, they would be furious. And Judy told Aaron she'd taken a car to go shopping to the city center. Who is lying? Terry, the man looks sunburned. How can it be if he hasn't left his room for days? Aaron suspected one guest was involved in the newest criminal scheme of the hotel owners. He started to follow the man, watching his every step. At night, the detective would climb the tree growing next to the man's room and check if he was doing something fishy. One night, he saw the man tossing and turning in his bed for hours. He must be up to no good, Aaron thought. As if on cue, the man picked up the receiver, dialed some number, waited for a while, and hung up without saying a word. Soon after that, he fell asleep. What was the whole thing about? Someone was snoring loudly in the room next to his, but the phone ringing woke up the person who was snoring, and the man finally managed to fall asleep. Finally, our undercover detective seems to be on the right track. A rich businessman, Mr. Wilson, disappeared from his room. It was rumored he'd come to buy the resort from the current owners. The police questioned four suspects and shared this information with Aaron. The businessman's assistant said, I felt unwell on our way here. I went to my room and as soon as we arrived, took some medicine and fell asleep immediately. The hotel owner said, We agreed to meet with Mr. Wilson in a conference room, but I got lost while trying to find him. I finally came there, but Mr. Wilson never showed up. Mr. Wilson's wife, who accompanied him on his trip, said, My husband was going to meet with the hotel owner. I'm not interested in business, so I went to the spa. Who is behind the businessman's disappearance? The hotel owner. How could he get lost in his own hotel? Ethan put a coin into an empty bottle and plugged it tightly with a cork. Then he told his friend he'd remove the coin without breaking the bottle or taking out the cork. And he did it. How? Ethan pushed the cork into the bottle and shook it to make the coin fall out. Jack was about to fail his exam. Luckily, the professor gave him one last chance. The guy had to arrange four nines to make them equal 100. He could use any math symbols. How did he do it? Jack figured out the correct answer pretty fast. 99 plus 9 out of 9 equals 100. Christina was dreaming of dating a rich boy from her college. After doing some research, she settled on three guys. All of them were nice and interested in her. But the girl needed the richest. Once she saw them having lunch together. After checking what each of them was eating, Christina made her choice. Which guy did she pick? The guy who's eating seafood and avocado. Not only are these products the most expensive, but they're also the healthiest. When do you look at number two and say 10? It happens when you look at your wristwatch. You're given eight eggs. You need to break two, cook two, and eat two. 
How many eggs will you have in the end? You can break, cook, and eat two eggs. It'll leave you with six eggs. Julia was angry with her boyfriend. She sent a message to her best friend who lived in Switzerland. In this message, the girl complained about something the guy had done. But her friend sent her a very strange reply. Give, get. Give, get. Give, get. Give, get. What did Julia's friend mean? She wanted to say that Julia should forgive and forget. You're walking through the forest. Suddenly, you see a crossroad and a man standing there. One road leads to the village where criminals live and the other to a safe place. You don't know whether you could trust this person. You can ask him one question. If the man is a criminal, he'll lie. If he's from the safe place, he'll tell you the truth. Which question should you ask? Where is your village? If the person is innocent, he'll send you to the safe place. If he's a criminal, he'll lie and point to the safe place too. It was Mr. and Mrs. Anderson's wedding anniversary and everyone was getting ready for the party. Mrs. Anderson wanted to put on a diamond bracelet her husband gave her for their wedding. When she opened her jewelry box, she didn't see the bracelet. Trying not to panic, the woman called her teenage daughters, Joan and Andrea. I've told you a thousand times not to touch my things, and still, one of you has taken my jewelry again. Joan shouted, I haven't touched your jewelry box. Andrea also denied taking her mom's stuff. Why would I need your bracelet? I've got lots of my own. Which girl is lying? It was Andrea who took the earrings. Mrs. Anderson didn't specify which piece of jewelry was missing. Then how did the girl know it was a bracelet? Can you figure out the answer to this rebus riddle? Mary plus Mary. The answer is summary. One out of nine identical balls is heavier than the others. How can you figure out which one it is after only two weighings? You should divide all the balls into three groups and weigh two of them. That's how you can figure out which group contains the heavy ball. After that, you should pick two balls from the heaviest group, weigh one of them with the other, and you'll understand which ball of the three is the heaviest. And now, the best part your results. If you got 0 to 5 points, it might be too early to try on your Sherlock's hat. Practice more, pay attention to details, and you'll get there. If your score is 5 to 10 points, you're probably ready to apply for a detective's assistant position. And then, with some more experience, you might even replace your boss one day. And if you got 11 to 15 points, you can easily open your own detective agency. You have a sharp eye for details and amazing logical skills. You go to a swimming pool once a week, and today's the day, but everything suddenly goes wrong. As soon as you enter the swimming pool, you look at the TV in the hall. Breaking news! Someone spotted a zombie in town. They probably went downtown, and they may be anywhere. If you see one, call the police immediately. You think it's probably safer to stay in the swimming pool. Zombies are slow, and probably aren't good at swimming. So you go to the shower to change, but as soon as you enter the shower room, you notice that something's off. Who's a zombie? The two girls seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on the man's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had cuts or scratches, unless they're a zombie. Once upon a time, there was a wealthy king who hired an artist to paint his portrait. The artist told the king that he wanted to be paid in gold, and he wanted to get paid every day. He also said it would take him seven days to finish the painting. The wealthy king had only large bars of gold and he wanted to give one bar for his work. But since the artist wanted to get paid daily, he needed to come up with a plan. He had a magic tool that could cut any material, 
but it was able to make only two cuts. How did the king split the gold bar so that the artist got his gold every single day in equal amounts? The king was really smart, so he cut the bars this way. 1 7th, 2 7ths, and 4 7ths. The first day, he gave the artist 1 7th of the gold bar. The second day, he gave him 2 7ths, but took 1 7th back as change. The third day, he gave 1 7th back. The fourth day, he gave 4 7ths, but took the other two pieces back as change. The fifth day, he gave 1 7th, so the artist got 5 7ths of the bar. The sixth day, he gave 2 7ths, but took 1 7th back again. And the very last day, the artist got 1 7th, so in the end, he had a full bar of gold. Four friends, Josh, Maggie, Jason, and Rosie, were walking in the woods. It was a wonderful day, and they were about to start a picnic. But all of a sudden, the sun turned to black, and they saw dozens of zombies approaching them. The friends started running away, and saw a tunnel. It was dark and scary, but the guys knew exactly that when they crossed it, they'd be safe. They had only 12 minutes to cross the tunnel. It takes Josh one minute to cross it. Jason can do it in two minutes. Maggie thinks it will take her four minutes, and Rosie can cross it in five minutes. Not to risk it, the guys decided to split into two groups. The problem is that they only have one torchlight, and there's no way they go there in four. How can they escape? First, Josh and Jason should cross it with a torchlight while the girls are waiting on the other side. It takes two minutes, plus one minute for Josh to go back. They still have nine minutes. Josh hands the torchlight to the girls, and they cross the tunnel in five minutes. Four minutes left. When the girls are on the other side, they give the torchlight to Jason, who comes back to take Josh in two minutes, and they run back together in another two minutes. The airport security had an emergency alert. There's a man with fake documents trying to fly away from New York. They had three suspects who look almost the same. Which passport is fake? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. All backgrounds should be solid. John's passport has a suspicious photo in it. His documents are fake. Mason is a lifeguard. One day, a girl came up to him asking for help. She said someone had stolen her wallet, which she noticed when she was going to go and grab a soda pop. Mason checked the towel where the girl left her stuff, but the only thing he noticed were her own footprints. Is this girl lying to Mason? The girl was telling the truth. Mason had an eagle eye, and he saw a guy with a fishing rod. He must have stolen the girl's wallet. No one wants to go fish in the public beach. Robbers stole a few precious gems the other day. The police were alerted immediately, but they didn't know where to look for the thieves. Suddenly, they got an anonymous email. Check all the bottles in the cars leaving the town. Best regards, Mr. X. At the end of the day, the officers stopped a car loaded with boxes and bottled water. The bottle bottoms were all covered with paint, so they thought the gems should be in one of them. The level of water was the same in all the bottles, but when one of the officers placed one of them right next to the box, he instantly realized something was off. What was it? The bottle standing next to the box is much lower than those still inside. The police then found there was a double bottom and the gems were hidden right underneath it. Two friends, Martin and Clyde, had a bet. Martin said he would throw a ball and it would come back to him. He also said there would be no obstacle or wall the ball could ricochet from. Clyde said it was impossible and he lost. How's that? Martin threw the ball straight up. It obviously came back to him. No magic, just physics. Emily grabbed a really nice muffin at the cafeteria and put it on the office desk. She wanted to save it for later, but when she came back from the meeting, she saw someone had eaten her muffin. There were only three people who could do that, and only one person is telling the truth. Grace said it was Alicia. Alicia said she didn't eat anything. Tina says she didn't eat anything either. Who ate the muffin?
it was Tina. Only one person is telling the truth, and it's Alicia. If Grace or Tina told the truth, then there would be two truthful people. But Emily knew only one person wasn't lying. Patrick really wanted to come to a private party, but the security would ask each person if they knew the secret access code. Patrick decided to overhear their conversations. When the person came up to the entrance, the security said six, and the guest said three. Then the security said ten to the second visitor, and the reply was three as well. The third visitor also said three, but the security said two. Patrick thought he was ready to join the best party in town. When he came up to the entrance, the guard said seven, and Patrick replied three. The security didn't let him in. What should Patrick have said to get into that fancy party? He should have said five. The guest needed to count letters. Six, ten, and two have three letters. That's why the answer was three. In the word seven, there are five letters. Ben loved diamonds. For some time, he would spend $5,000 a day on precious stones. At some point, he realized he had too many gems, so he started selling them at $3,000 a piece. Sometime later, he became a millionaire. How is that possible if he was obviously losing money? Before his gem rush, Ben used to be a billionaire. Since he started losing money, he became only a millionaire. A vampire moved to a big city where nobody knew him to start a brand new life. Still, he just couldn't help it and started biting locals every single night. People got scared and invited a private investigator to solve the problem. A couple of days later, Detective Reitman had three suspects. He decided to visit each of them to find out who the vampire was. After visiting all the houses, he was sure he found the vampire. Who was it? Well, the man on the left has loads of garlic in the kitchen, and vampires are scared of it. The second suspect had a lot of silver-plated accessories, earrings, piercings, and a chain. Vampires don't really like silver. The guy in the blue shirt is a vampire. Long ago, in the Kingdom of Riddles, a criminal was caught. The guards took him to the king, who was famous for loving riddles. King Archibald said that if Harry, the criminal, managed to solve his riddle, he would set him free. Harry agreed and Archibald drew a two-foot line on the ground with his foot. The king asked Harry to make this line two times shorter without touching it. In the end, Harry was free. What did he do? Harry drew a four-foot line with his foot, so that the one the king drew got two times shorter. Karen took part in a TV quiz where she could win one pound of pure gold. This quiz wasn't like ordinary ones. At the end of the show, the host brought her three large jars. Each of them has one pound of pure gold inside, plus some unpleasant surprise. The first jar has venomous snakes inside, the second one is full of acid, and the third one is filled with boiling hot water. Karen could only use her hands to get the gold out of the jars. She has 30 minutes to think. Which one should she choose? Karen should choose the one with hot water. It cools down pretty fast, and it's gonna get lukewarm in half an hour. Guess who's rich now? Discover the Sun was a very popular travel agency. It sold package tours to the hottest and most exotic destinations. But one day, the police found out this company helped criminals flee the country. They also learned the exact date when it would happen the next time. On that day, Several police officers arrived at the airport. They stopped a group of tourists who were flying to a Caribbean island. But the detectives didn't know the criminal's identity. That's why they had to search the baggage of all the customers. Look at their bags and say who the criminal is. It's the young woman on the left. If she's going on a package tour to a hot place, why does she need a winter jacket? Eric is trapped in a room. It's slowly filling with water that's coming from a tap in the wall. There are no windows in the room, and the door is blocked. 
Eric has a mop and a big bucket. What can he do to survive? The only thing the guy needs to do is to turn off the tap. Ah, you knew that, didn't you? Laura agreed to take part in a riddle competition. One of the tasks was to get out of a locked room. She had to figure out the code for the combination lock. And the only thing that could help her was this note. 2 equals 6, 4 equals 26, 5 equals 426, 6 equals what? In a couple of minutes, Laura was already leaving the room. What was the code? The code was just one number. 6. 6 equals 2 because 2 equals 6. Megan invited her friends to her favorite restaurant to celebrate her birthday. They were having a lot of fun. Megan got the best birthday present ever. Her friends gave her a diamond ring. Suddenly, the room plunged into darkness. After several minutes of total confusion, the lights came back on. But Megan's ring was gone. Look at the picture thoroughly and try to figure out who stole it. It's the waiter. Look at the glass he's holding. He put the ring inside. Now there's much more water in it. Jacob's girlfriend Nicole loved riddles. One day she was on a business trip to France. She called Jacob and told him it was her relative's birthday. Could you go and congratulate them, please? When the guy asked her which relative he had to visit, Nicole answered, It's the daughter of the only son of my grandfather. Who is this mysterious relative Jacob is asked to congratulate? It's Nicole's sister. Brandon was a police officer. That day, he was patrolling the streets of the small town where he lived. When the man was driving past his best friend's house, he saw that the front door was open. He decided to check if everything was okay. As soon as Brandon entered the hall, he spotted his friend lying on the floor. After the man was taken to a hospital, the officer went to question the neighbors. Julie said, I've been planting new fruit trees in my garden since early morning. Nathan said, I have some problems with my car. I was in the garage all day long trying to fix them. And Patrick told Brandon, They aired a new episode of my favorite TV show. I stayed at home to watch it. Which neighbor is lying? Nathan. His hands and gloves are spotless. It wouldn't be possible if he had been repairing his car. This means he's lying. Ms. Lopez took her students to an art museum. Half an hour into the excursion, a worried museum worker approached the professor. He told Ms. Lopez one of the exhibits, a precious vase, had been damaged. The culprit could be no one else but one of the students. Only three of them came close to the vase, but who ruined it? Maria said, After I looked at the vase, I noticed my makeup was smudged, so I went straight to the bathroom. Antony said, I didn't touch the exhibit. After looking at it, I went to the next room to see the dino skeleton. And Nathan said he had been following Ms. Lopez taking notes. One of these students is lying, but who? Antony. There are no dinosaur bones in the art museum. Someone broke into Samantha's house through the window and stole some valuable things. When the police came, she told them she suspected her younger brother Sam. The police officers went to question the guy, but he denied everything. I was playing basketball several days ago and broke my arm. It's in a cast now. I wouldn't be able to get into the house. The police officers left. But the next day, one of them saw Sam in a cafe. The guy was still wearing the cast, but the officer immediately arrested him. Why?
When the police visited Sam, the guy had the cast on his right arm. Now, it was on his left arm. Look at these two families having dinner. One is munching on pizzas with different yummy toppings. The other is having steaks and vegetables. Can you figure out which family is poorer? No matter how tasty the pizzas are, they're still cheaper than large pieces of meat. This means the family eating steaks must have more money than the second one. Keith had a tragic accident when he was a teenager. Unfortunately, it left the guy blind. He was dreaming of being able to see again for years. One day, Keith was lucky to find a doctor who told him a special surgery could solve his problem. Keith agreed right away. The surgery went well, and the guy took a train to go home. His girlfriend accompanied him. The doctor told Keith he had to wait for at least three hours before taking the bandages off. Keith was so impatient and excited, he could hardly wait for the time to be over. Three hours later, they were still on the train. And even though his girlfriend was against this idea, the guy wouldn't listen. He slowly pulled off the bandages, and then he screamed and lost consciousness. Why? When Keith opened his eyes, the train was going through a dark tunnel. The poor guy thought he was still blind and fainted. To pass an exam, Dennis has to solve a riddle. 2 plus 2 is the same as 2 times 2. Find a set of 3 whole numbers whose sum will be the same as their total when multiplied. Dennis gave the right answer almost immediately. These numbers are 1, 2, and 3. Tyler was going to his friend's place in the evening when a stranger in a black mask caught him. The next thing the guy knew, he was in a large room, locked in a cage. There were three levers in the wall next to the cage. If he pulled the first lever, he would let hungry lions into the cage. The second lever would fill the cage with water. And the third lever would activate a special mechanism. It would make the top of the cage move down towards the bottom, crushing everyone and everything inside. Which lever should Tyler pull to survive? His only choice is the second lever. All the water will flow out through the bars of the cage. Joan came home one evening and discovered that someone had burgled her house. When the police arrived, first of all, they went to question the neighbors. Victoria said, I was visiting my friend. She lives two blocks away. I came home a couple of minutes ago. Peter explained to the officers that he was ill. He only made a short trip to the pharmacy and stayed in bed after that. Nathan said, My wife and I were preparing for a barbecue party. Our friends were supposed to come to us. But as you see, it's pouring with rain and we had to cancel our plans. The police officers realized that, for some reason, one of the neighbors was lying. Who was it? Victoria. It was raining, and she said she had just come home. But her hair, clothes, and the umbrella, which was standing near the door, were absolutely dry. Matthew has only black and white socks but he keeps them all mixed. One evening, the guy's in a hurry. He's getting ready for a romantic dinner with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the power goes out. Now it's completely dark in the room. The guy has 10 white and 10 black socks in the drawer. He can't see anything. How many socks must he pull out of the drawer to get two matching ones? Just three. In a set of three socks, he's bound to have two socks of the same color. Look at the picture carefully and try to figure out which person is left-handed. The waiter is a lefty. 
It's easier for a left-handed person to hold the tray in the right hand and deal with the food and drinks with the left or dominant one. A farmer only has goats, sheep, and horses on his farm. At the moment, they're all horses, but five, all goats, but four, and all sheep, but three. So, how many of each animal does the farmer have? There were three sheep, two goats, and one horse on the farm. Altogether, there were six animals. Meh. Mr. Jones was watching TV when the doorbell rang. It was a guy who introduced himself as Lincoln. He said that he was a member of a volunteer group. They were collecting donations to save the rarest species of dodo birds. But Mr. Jones didn't believe him and called the police. Why? There are no more dodo birds. They went extinct in the 17th century. Arwen, a rich man's only son, visited his cousin Richie. They were talking about sports and drinking tea. Suddenly, Arwen stopped breathing and fell to the floor. Richie called the doctor who said that Arwen had been poisoned. Detective Callum arrived and started the investigation. Soon, he accused Richie of poisoning his cousin. How did Richie manage to do that? Arwen was the only one who drank his tea sweet. The poison was in the sugar. Eloise was studying in the library. She went to the bathroom and left her things on the table. When the girl returned, she realized someone had stolen her cell phone. She called the police, and they questioned the other three students who were in the library at that time. Bernard said, I left the library right after Eloise. I wanted to get a drink from the vending machine. I didn't touch her things. Beth said, I was studying the whole time and didn't even see anything. Serenity said, I was in another part of the library and didn't come close to Eloise's table. Who stole the girl's phone? It was Bernard. He said he'd left to get a drink from the vending machine. But look, there are no drinks in there, only snacks. Mm. Samantha and her daughter Avery went to the lake to spend some time together. They found a nice spot and sat down there. A bit later, Samantha remembered she'd left her camera in the car and went to get it. When she returned, her daughter was gone. The woman called the police and they started to look for the girl. There were three people nearby, and the police officers interrogated them all. Benjamin said, I was walking nearby and saw a girl sitting by the lake, but I didn't do anything to her. Genevieve said she hadn't even seen the girl or her mother. And Victoria said she hadn't seen them either, but she heard someone screaming. Who should the officers arrest? They should arrest Genevieve. Look, she's wearing Avery's scarf. Brian called the police early in the morning. He said that the night before, he and his girlfriend Estelle had been watching a scary movie together. Estelle was afraid to go home, so she stayed at his place. She was having a bad dream with zombies chasing after her, and she didn't wake up in the morning. The guy didn't know what had happened, but the police arrested him, claiming he was guilty. Why? The guy said his girlfriend hadn't woke up in the morning. Then how did he know what she had been dreaming about? Theodore came from New York to his hometown, Chicago, to spend a week with his father. Three days later, the father called the police and said his son had poisoned himself. The police examined Theodore's things to check if there was anything suspicious. After that, they took the father to the police station for further interrogation. What seemed suspicious to them? (laughs) 
The officers found a return ticket from Chicago to New York. Theodore wouldn't have bought this ticket if he hadn't been planning to return to New York. Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. And you know what? She got lost again! After wandering around for a couple of hours, she finally found the witch's house. Esme asked the witch to show her the way back home. The witch wanted to make Esme her maid, but she had a problem. She was planning a vacation and wanted to go fishing. Her fishing rod was 13 feet long, and one was only allowed to take things no longer than 12 feet on the train. The witch promised Esme that if the girl found a solution, she'd let her go. What can Esme recommend? Esme was very good at geometry. She advised the witch to put the rod in a 12 by 5 foot box. Diagonally, it fit perfectly. On a Sunday evening, Mrs. Collins was having tea at her friend's house. Her friend suddenly said that she had seen one of Mrs. Collins' daughters in the mall that day. Mrs. Collins got angry because all of the girls were grounded. She asked which daughter it was, but her friend couldn't tell. She wasn't wearing her glasses when she was at the mall. When Mrs. Collins returned home, she asked the girls what they had been doing the whole day. Abigail said she'd spent the day reading. Brianna said she had stayed at school after classes to study a bit more. Charlotte said that she had been practicing for her upcoming piano concert. Who lied? Brianna, it's Sunday, there's no school. A young girl, Tenley, was brought to the hospital after being poisoned. But the examination showed that Tenley hadn't eaten or drunk anything that day. Her sister, Kennedy, said she didn't know anything about the accident. Tenley's friend, Ruby, said, We were at school when Tenley felt bad. Tenley's boyfriend, Archie, said, I haven't even talked to her today. How was Tenley poisoned, and who did it? The girl hasn't eaten anything, but she has some lipstick on. That's what contains poison. And the only person who had access to Tenley's room that day was her sister, Kennedy. There was a car accident in a tunnel. The police suspected that one of the drivers, Owen, had fallen asleep behind the wheel. But Owen denied it. I just couldn't see well because of the rainstorm, he said. The police didn't believe him and immediately arrested the man. Why? The accident happened in a tunnel. It couldn't rain there. Someone in the town was stealing cars. Every time a car disappeared, its owner would get a message from an anonymous number. In each message, there were two emojis that didn't make any sense. The police tracked the number, and the geolocation led to three houses. They questioned the owners, Mr. Walson, Mrs. Coleman, and Mr. Woolridge. Can you tell who the car thief is? The emojis seem to make sense after all. They're a wall and a father with a son. Combine them and you'll get Walson. So Mr. Walson must be the one stealing cars. Now let's play the game Who's Less Smart? It's early morning. Tom and Joseph are driving their teenage children to school. Who is not smart? Joseph. His son is not in the car. This father has probably forgotten about the poor guy. Annie and Emma are volunteering in an animal shelter. Annie is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is not smart here? Annie. She's giving dog food to the cats. Logan and Anthony are both having job interviews at 4 p.m. 
Logan is packing some food, and Anthony is ironing his best suit. Who's not smart? Anthony, look at the clock! The interview is going to start in 5 minutes, and he's still at home. Logan is at home too, but there's still another hour till his interview begins. Noel and Gabriella are cleaning the house. Noel is listening to music while vacuum cleaning the living room. And Gabrielle is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? Noel, the vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. Skylar and Autumn are both going on summer vacation. Skylar is going to Spain, and Autumn is visiting her sister in Chile. Who is not smart? Autumn. She's packing shorts and swimwear, but she won't need them because it's winter in Chile. Both Josh and Amelia didn't sleep well because their neighbor's dog had been barking all night. Amelia asked Josh to take out the trash while she was making some coffee for them. Who is not smart? Josh. Instead of the trash, he's taken out the bags with old toys they've collected to donate. Janine and Teresa are making dinner for their families. Who is not smart? Well, they both have a problem. Janine is putting out a fire with water. And Teresa has a mouse in her kitchen and an ant in the dough. Two couples are about to get married. The hall is full of guests. The bride looks stunning in these long white dresses. And the groom seems to be absolutely happy. All of a sudden, one of the guests noticed there's something wrong with one of the couples. Can you guess what? Mary and Alex have no reflections at all. Look at this decorated mirror behind them. They must be vampires. I wonder how Mary did her makeup. Samantha and Julie wanted to have a peaceful Sunday afternoon. They decided to have a hot air balloon ride and headed to the park. The instructor offered them to choose which one they wanted to ride. A blue one, a green one, or a yellow one. Samantha loves the blue one. No surprise, look at her clothes. And Julie wants to go for the green one. Which girl isn't very attentive? Samantha. The color isn't that important. There are no sandbags. You want to have a safe ride, don't you? In one of the galaxies, there's planet pink. There are many people, but few animals. Only hens and roosters live there. They can be of three different colors, pink, red, and yellow. Andrew went to that planet to see his friends for the weekend. And while he was walking down the street, he saw three bird couples in love. No bird can be with the partner of the same color. Can you guess the color of the partner of the red hen? It's the yellow rooster. The red hen can't go out with the red one. And the pink rooster, as you see, is madly in love with the yellow hen. Emily's aunt has bought a bottle of perfume for her niece's birthday. Sadly, she couldn't keep it because Helga, her sister, is terribly allergic to perfumes. Emily brought it back to her aunt, who bought it for $65. The old lady sold it to someone for $80. Then, suddenly, she remembered she had another niece, so she got it back for $70. Sally, the forgotten niece, turned out to be allergic too, so the auntie had to sell it again for $60. Did she make any profit? Yep, she made $5 and grabbed a large latte for them. A genius invented a watch he thought no one else but him could read. A minute on his watch lasts an hour, and an hour lasts a minute. The watch shows the right time twice a day. Can you read it? It's 5.30, just like it is. 
The genius changed the hand, placing the hour hand instead of the minute hand, and vice versa. Well, that doesn't seem that genius. Somebody was stealing important documents from the office. The guards didn't see anyone, neither did the secretary. The boss decides to install the security cameras to find out who was doing it. They checked the footage carefully and found out who it was. Can you guess? It's the man in the white shirt. When he went out of the office, he had two folders in his hand. At the beginning of the day, he had only one. Jamie wanted to know if his wife cheated on him. Mm. He wasn't sure if she actually went on that business trip in Australia. He asked her to send a selfie, mm. which she did. When mm. he saw the photo, he knew exactly that his wife was lying to him. How did he guess? Well, it's January in Canada, and the streets are full of snow. How come there's snow in Australia? It's supposed to be summer there. Everybody knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have the name Mary? Back in the day, she was young and beautiful too. Jack has a small shop that sells socks. One day, he decided to attract more people and launched an advertisement. Socks for free. Many people came there, but all the customers had to pay, even though the socks were free. Why? Jack would only give the left sock to his customers. They looked nice, and people wanted to buy it. Who needs only one sock after all? A man was driving his car all the way from New York to LA. At the end of the trip, he discovered that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he reached his destination successfully. How is it possible? The punctured tire was a spare one. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water, coming from a faucet in the wall. There's no windows in the room, and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. There are five girls in the room. Nicole is talking on the phone, Kimberly is reading, Jessica is playing hide-and-seek, and Melody is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Jessica. Five, six, seven. Five, six. Which number is missing? A small hint. It's not seven. You have seven seconds to do the math. Number 8 is missing. The subsequent number of 567 is 568. Sally works as a barista. This morning, she dropped a cup full of coffee. Luckily, her white shirt wasn't stained, but it took a while to clean up the mess. How come? There were coffee beans in the cup. They ended up right under the counter. Imagine you've just entered a pitch black room. There's an oil lamp, a newspaper, and some kindling wood inside the room. You only have one match. You have to make a tough choice. What to light first? The oil lamp is definitely a good choice, but it's still incorrect. First of all, you'll need to light the match. After the bank had been robbed, the police found the money in the park among cacti. After the police officers arrested all the suspects, they almost immediately figured out who the bank robber was. Can you do the same? This guy on the left has scratches left by cacti all over his body. 
There are six glasses in a row on the table. The first three are filled with orange juice, and the other three are empty. Your task is to make full and empty glasses alternate by moving just one glass. How can you do it? Take the second glass and pour the juice in the fifth glass. Dennis was at home watching TV. All of a sudden, his wife's super expensive vase fell and broke in their bedroom. He ran into the room in time to see a stranger jump out the window and run away. Dennis tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold. That's why he couldn't identify who it was. When the police arrived, they listened to his story and immediately knew he was lying. The man made the story up to not tell his wife he'd broken the vase. How did they know this? Anyone who wears glasses know they don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Adam Nixon, who didn't really like oh. modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the manager of the gallery thanked <laughs> Mr. Nixon for his actions. How come? Adam was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and saved many more exhibits. Jane was on a hike in Africa when she decided to cross a bridge to admire the view. When she was in the middle of the bridge, she heard something moving behind her. She turned and saw a huge hungry lion waiting for her. She turned to the other side. There were giant snakes. The water to her left was filled with hungry piranhas. Where should she go? She should jump into the lake. Piranhas don't live in lakes, especially in Africa. They live in South America. Look closer. These are just some harmless fish. Two fathers and two sons found three oranges. When they shared them, everyone got a whole orange. How come? There were three people, grandfather, father, and son. Once upon a time in a spooky forest, there were seven trolls who were all brothers. They were all born three years apart. The youngest troll is 100 years old now. How old is the oldest brother? He's 118. Looking good for that age. A man wakes up in a place he's never been before. He rushes to the exit and sees two doors. When he opens the first door, he sees that the hall is made of magnifying glass. The scorching hot sun fries anyone who enters in no time. Behind the second door, a huge dragon breathing with fire is sleeping. But anyone who enters this hall risks waking it up immediately. How did he escape safely? He needed to wait for dusk. There's no sun and he can easily get out of that place. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just